On this uh, second Sunday of the season of Lent, I'd like to contemplate for a moment on some aspects of our understanding of the symbol of the cross, the cross of Christ. I'm just going to begin by reading a very short section of the um, Matthew's version of the events that led to the crucifixion. At chapter 27, verse 27, then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace and the whole company gathered round him. They stripped off his clothes, put a scarlet ro robe on him. Then they made a crown out of thorny branches and placed it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they knelt before him and mocked him. Long live the king of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the stick and hit him over the head. And when they had finished mocking him, they took the robe off, put his own clothes back on him, and they led him out to crucify him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There is no doubt, no argument that to be crucified was a dreadful way to die. And the passage that we read from the Gospel just gives us something of the, the horror of what happened to Jesus. No written account could possibly convey the terrible pain and the humiliation of the cross. And it would seem that this dreadful death would have been something to forget rather than something to boast about. There is no doubt that the resurrection did to some extent cancel out the experience of Jesus on the cross. Certainly the glory of the risen Christ became a symbol of God's great victory over death. And the risen Christ was the, the cause of the disciples coming out into the street, out of hiding, being able to face the world with courage once again, proclaiming, he is risen. But when we begin to think again about the whole work of God in Christ, the cross still becomes a primary focus of God's love for the world. Without the resurrection, this course would not be so certain because the empty tomb had the effect of changing our whole concept of the cross. But nevertheless, the cross remains the prime focus, not only of the hatred of mankind, but also the love of God. A few years ago, Mel Gibson 
produced a very controversial film called The Passion of Christ. And that film really exposes the the dreadful cruelty and the brutality of the scourging of Jesus and his eventual crucifixion. But that film would have been no more than a horror film without a couple of brief scenes at the end which showed the tomb with the stone rolled away and the grave's clothes lying in that empty tomb. And then a brief picture of Jesus showing the holes in his hands. And so because of the resurrection, we are able to look at what happened on that hill of Golgotha and we are able to examine and relive the passion of our Lord and we begin to recognise the significance of the cross and why the cross had become such an important symbol of our faith and why for St. Paul the sacrificial death of Jesus became the very focus of his theology. The cross speaks to the world of the sacrificial, unconditional love of God. In the first place, the cross reminded St. Paul of his own sin. It reminded him that Jesus died on the cross for his sin. And this was one of the great realizations of Paul and many, many other Christians over the centuries that we as human beings are basically sinful, that none of us has really done anything to earn God's love. And time and again we have offended him by the things that we do. But God loved us so much that he was prepared to give his son, Jesus, on a cross to die for the forgiveness of our sin. And so when we look at the cross, it says to us, you have sinned. But it also says that Jesus died here on this cross for you. The cross is God's way of saying to each one of us, I forgive you. And so the cross is our confirmation that God really does love us, that he not only loves us but puts no condition on that love. He gives us his forgiveness at the cost of Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. And God loved the world so much that he was prepared to give his only son that we might have life in his name. 
And also the cross is a, set, a signpost. It points the way to everlasting life. The cross says to us, this is the way. This is the only way to salvation. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father but by me. You know, we can do all that we like in our lifetime to, to give God a good impression of us. We can do all the good things. We can earn all the praise and the merit from our fellow human beings. We can add up all the ways that we have cared for people. But if we have not done the will of God, if we have not loved him with all our heart and with all our mind and with all our strength, and if we have not put our trust in Jesus Christ and his way, then we will not receive the kingdom of God. The only way to salvation is God's way. And we already know that the cross, with all its horrors, was God's way. Finally, the cross changes people's lives. Paul was a, a changed person when he was confronted with the truth of the cross of Christ. When he discovered the true meaning of the death of Jesus on the cross, he was a changed man. He was a man who was able to look at life in a completely different way. And so it is for all those who come face to face with Jesus. We are coming face to face with his redeeming death. And when we do that, it's impossible to look on life in quite the same way. The cross tells us that someone has died for us. How can we then live our lives carelessly, stupidly, selfishly, greedily, knowing that someone that someone had been prepared to die a horrible, painful death to give us life in all its fullness. In the cross of Christ, I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time, all the the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. All glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.